This is Intro to Coding, presented by Total from the Nashville Public Library. This video is meant to provide an introduction to Scratch and its features. First is your project. Your project is a creation that is made in Scratch. It can be just about anything, a game, an animation, music, whatever you want. You use a combination of sprites, code, and stages to make a program of your own design. This is a script. A script is a collection of blocks that all interlock with each other that determines how your sprites move and interact. You can change the blocks and what they do by assembling them together in the script. The type and order of blocks change what they cause the sprite to do. For example, these scripts right here affect the sprite that is right here. For example, if I disassemble the left arrow script, when I press the left arrow, the sprite no longer moves. If I put it back, it switches to a different screen. Next is your sprite. Your sprites are objects that perform actions in a project. Your code is what gives instruction to the sprite so that it knows what to do. For example, the code that I have right now tells my sprite to move when I press the space key. You can change the look of your sprite. So for example, you can use this control panel to change the size and direction of your sprite. Or you can choose a sprite from Scratch's database, create your own sprite, get a random sprite, or upload an image that can act as your sprite. You can also have multiple sprites in your project that can interact with each other. This is your stage, also known as your backdrop. Your stage is the background of a project. Similarly to your sprite, you can change the way the stage looks by choosing a backdrop from Scratch's database, creating your own backdrop, getting a random backdrop, or uploading a backdrop from your computer. You can also use your code to tell the stage to do something. For example, I have it set so that when I press the space key, it changes my backdrop. Some blocks, however, cannot be used with the stage. For example, motion blocks. Sprites and backgrounds each follow their own scripts. So that way, when you're coding, there is a separate code for your backdrop and a separate code for your sprite. Now, I will go over some common blocks that you will use when you're coding your sprite and your backdrop. These are event blocks. They normally start most scripts, and they usually begin with the word when. They're used to make sprites react to keys being pressed or the sprite being clicked. So, for example, if I drag out the event block that says when the space key is pressed, that means that anything underneath it will only happen when I press the space key. These are motion blocks, and as the title suggests, they will make your sprite move. For example, if I were to grab the block that says move 10 steps and put it under the event block that we placed previously, now when I press the space key, my sprite moves 10 steps. These motion blocks are typically placed inside of loops and if-then statements. And one thing to remember when dealing with motion blocks is that Scratch treats the stage as a coordinate plane. So positive numbers in the x direction move right and negative numbers in the x direction move left. Similarly, positive numbers in the y direction move up and negative numbers in the y direction move down. With motion blocks, you can make your sprite do a variety of different things. Lastly, these are control blocks. There are two types of control blocks, loops and if-then statements. Loops are used if you want to repeat an action. There are three different types. One, if you want to repeat an action forever, if you want to repeat an action for a certain amount of time, or if you would like to repeat an action till a certain condition is met. The other type of control blocks are if-then statements. You would use if-then statements to test if a given condition is true or false. If it's true, then it'll perform the action. If it's false, or then it does nothing. Or if you choose an if-then or else statement, if the given condition is true, then it'll perform the action. Or if it is false, then it'll perform the action underneath the else tab. 
I hope this introduction was helpful and I look forward to seeing your creation soon.